Looks like um, we got all the cameras on for the first time here today. Mm -hmm. And this is our first uh, podcast that we're recording. My name's Enos Hirschberger. This is my uh, niece. Lavina Hirschberger. Lavina Hirschberger. We are recording live today for the first time uh, in the studio, and we are just going to, I'm going to interview Lavina and document her story on how she grew up and what that experience was like and when she began to uh, think about leaving the Amish because she grew up Amish. And for most of you, you already know that I grew up Amish, and uh, I've shared some of my story to many different people and uh, looking to document more of my story on this podcast, but also bring other people on and share their stories. So that's what we're doing today. And so go ahead and uh, begin sharing your story. Where what was it like growing up Amish? And, uh, I know. In an overall fashion, it was really good as far as we knew life. But once you leave, it's you look back and you learn a lot of values, but you also learn a lot of stuff that you did not learn that I don't think people in the English world learn. Like there's. What do you mean by English? Because a lot of people that are listening don't know what English and, yeah. means. Yeah. <laughs> so the Amish refer to everyone that is an Amish is English. So it doesn't matter where you're from or what you are. As long as you're not Amish, you're English. And I still struggle with that, with not calling everyone English. Gotcha. So yeah. I think most people, most people that are um, listening, are more than likely not Amish, and so they're yeah. they're gonna be wondering, yeah, uh, why I've, is she referring to English? And, yeah, uh, I've heard so. that a lot already. I accidentally say English, and I'm like English, I'm like, oh, sorry, I did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's really something you have to catch yourself <laughs> with. It's a lot of stuff like that, struggling with the language, like our English was not our first language, like a lot of stuff that I still struggle with, like I learned English young, okay. but there's still a lot of stuff that I I know, I know what it is, and I could say it in German, but it just won't come out in English, I just, I can't, like my mind still struggles with sometimes coming up with the English version mm -hmm. of stuff. Yeah. So yeah, that's also something that really needs work is getting your English language around the German one or the Pennsylvania Dutch because it's not really German. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, there's a lot of a lot of experiences with growing up Amish that are very different, and yeah, I I always I just say I love growing up Amish because I didn't know any other way and I'm glad of the values I learned but I also want to like I also love talking about the different things a lot of people don't understand and want to know more about yeah. like yeah I just I love talking about it it, it so brings back like, memories so you like talking about your experience of yes, growing up I Amish do. so okay. when I was 15 I was a school, I became a school teacher. So I was a school teacher for three years, an Amish school teacher for three years before I left Amish. And every time I mention that to someone, they're always like surprised. They're like, would you ever want to be a teacher again? I'm like, being an Amish school teacher and being a public school teacher is not the same thing. Like, yeah. Amish only go to eighth grade. Once you're past eighth grade, you can be a teacher you don't need any degrees or anything and that's what happened with me I graduated at 14 or left eighth grade at 14 and became a school teacher at 15 I loved it I always say it was like the best three years of my life because I love being around kids I love teaching wait wait so we we can't just skip over that because majority of people that are listening to this are going you were what at fourteen, and then at fifteen you became a school teacher. I was in eighth grade at fourteen. <laughs> yeah, eighth, eighth grade at fourteen, yeah. and then at fifteen you became a school teacher. Mm -hmm. So my first year when I was fifteen, first year in the schoolhouse, there were seventeen students. So there were like 
three in the first grade and yeah. three in the eighth grade, and the rest were between that in all the grades between that. So. So let me let me just <laughs> pause for just a second because, just to clarify, like the Amish school system, the way it's set up is. It, uh, if you can imagine, it's one big schoolhouse, mm -hmm. and everybody. The reason I know this is because I grew up Amish, yeah. very similar to the way yeah. you grew up. So, but it's it's one big schoolhouse. There's just rows of desks, yeah. and there's one teacher that's at the front of the schoolhouse on a big desk, and, <laughs> and they have the teacher has his own desk, own big desk, and. Uh, so all the students are in the same class mm -hmm. from age or from first grade to eighth grade. So age five or six to age thirteen or fourteen. Yeah. yeah. So you were the teacher of the entire class yep. from first grade to <laughs> eighth grade, and yeah. you were fifteen at the time. A lot of people doubted me. I doubted myself at times, but I loved it, and I think my <clears throat> students realized that, and I. If I, like, I tried coming at it from their angle more, like, understanding them, and you can imagine with that many kids, all those ages, they all won the tension, and a lot of them didn't learn the easiest, so you all had to give them one-on-one -on -one to teach them how to do everything, and it was a lot of different emotions in one day. I know some days... I got off school and I told mom, I'm like, I never want to go back. <laughs> <laughs> the next morning oh, I went bet. back and it was fun. So. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the, the most fun part was either going out on the playground and playing with them. So they have recess and noon breaks and they always go outside if it's not raining. They go outside on the playground all together and just play a game. And... That was, it was either that part or reading them. So after noon, after the noon break, every day, we'd have a 15-minute reading break, right? Literally read them a story. It's called oh, a okay. story for anyone that's Amish. And I love reading. So that 15 minutes of reading to them, everyone loved it. I loved it, and they loved it. So it was like a win-win. <laughs> and sometimes in the summer, in the fall, right, when school started, it was still warm. It was warm outside. We went outside to read, so we... Because we were playing, we were warm, so we wanted to cool off. <laughs> so we sometimes sat outside in a group and read a story for 15 minutes before we got back to classes. So that was always really fun. <laughs> so, yeah. so you really enjoyed reading. And I, I think probably some of the people watching are wondering, okay... Uh, I thought Amish kids are not allowed to play sports or they're not allowed yeah. to play uh, certain types of games and that is true for the way that we grew up mm -hmm. so we couldn't we weren't allowed to play organized sports so oh, anything yeah. yep. anything that was super organized we could play baseball but but it, it was a, I feel like it was different baseball than what people in sports play anyways the way we played because we didn't even play on teams yeah it was like, so you so see you guys might have had a little different experience we did, than the way our we parents like uh your brother my dad yeah he never understood our baseball game and i don't know where it came from where we learned to play it like that <laughs> okay, but so we call did, it base how did you guys play <laughs> so we had one pitcher just like regular baseball games and we had our diamond, like the regular ones, but then instead of having teams, we had everyone out on the field except for three people and the pitcher. So it was a pitcher, and then we had three batters. And we had a whole list of names written out on a tablet, and those three were like, you got three chances to strike out. And as long as you didn't strike out, you were still, like, in the game. So you, they all took turns to, like, bat and... So basically it was the same way as it is with a team, except there were only three people in and the rest were all out and you just came in when it was your turn. So every time okay. someone like struck out or got out or anything, their yeah. name was like scribbled out and put at the bottom of the list. So it just circulated like that. Okay. And I have no idea. I'm I'm always guessing it came because they had just started a, like a small community and there weren't a lot of kids there, so there were yeah. enough to have a team, so they just... Came up with uh, their own okay. version of it. 
That's what I'm guessing happened. So, so you guys were in a new community and there's not yeah. a lot of kids, not enough yeah. kids to make up a so team. So it was a really new community. So uh, my parents, I was two when it started and my parents were like one of the first ones down there uh -huh. to start. And all of, most of the other families were also just young with young children. Like I think the oldest, oldest child when they started that community was six, I think. Because oh, they wow. didn't have any old, okay. old, any old enough kids to have even schools because they used to just do homeschool. Yeah. So I still vaguely remember when the school, schoolhouse was built. Hmm. So I remember when there was like no schools. I remember the whole school being built from the ground up and all the like all the church communities and since like because they started it that young, it's also way more strict I feel like than it is in a big community where they can't regulate okay. everything as well because it was small enough that most of the youths like didn't they didn't do any like rumspringa like a lot of Amish do it because they were never taught how to do it. They didn't have any bad influence okay, so to let's, teach them. Let's talk about Rumspringa because that's a question that I get so oh, much. Oh my goodness, me and, too. Everyone and, just assumes Amish do like they don't all do it. But some people don't even know what Rumspringa is. And, and where did that become popular and how did it become popular? How I think. did it become popular? So I have a, a guy that I know that went on a TV show out of Ohio. His uh -huh. name's Jeremiah. And the TV show, I believe, was called Breaking Amish. And I so know. that TV show started, and they came up with this name called Room Spring. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because it's, it's a term that's used in the Old Order Amish community, actually. It's... So it's actually a term that's being used, but it's not official for all Amish. Yeah. So we grew up like super conservative, which uh -huh. is like the Swartz and it's considered or called the Swartz and Trooper Amish. Yeah. So not all Amish communities are the same. They are and, so uh, far from the same. But anyway, they they call that room springer, which <laughs> is an age of about sixteen to uh, twenty years old. Yeah where you just go out and you sow your wild oats, they say. <laughs> and, uh, oh and that's where you go party and do all yeah. kinds of crazy stuff and you leave the Amish and you experience the outside lifestyle. Yeah. Which is, some of it's true. Uh, a lot of kids take that time frame and actually go do that stuff. But it's not like set in stone where every kid or every yeah. community does that. Like that's yeah. not... Definitely um, not the case, and uh, it sounds like it wasn't the case for you guys because of being a new no. community, but the other thing that I wanted to talk about is, is I was thinking about when you said starting a new community, I know a lot of people are probably going to wonder, how do the Amish start a new community? Yeah. And so you... You were, I mean, I you were pretty young when, when you guys started that yeah. community, but how did it go and like how... How did they start a new community? It's really, I don't know how how Amish, from my life experience, I don't know how Amish are just born into a, a community and it's already big. So, if I said... Oh, because you're... Because you're, cause I you never knew go, that. Like, yeah. everything I knew was from the ground up. Like, I watched it all develop, the first weddings and everything. It was like, I didn't go to my first funeral till I was like 10 because... We never traveled to go to a funeral, and oh, it was the first wow. funeral of okay. the community. And starting like that, like, I remember when the schoolhouse, the first schoolhouse was built. So they had, like, once the community gets big enough, they have two schoolhouses. So I remember when the first one was built, and I remember when it started, and then I started going to school there, and then another schoolhouse was built, like, four miles from the first one. So they started that one too, and eventually the second one got way more students than the first one. So the first one is where I was a teacher then. Oh, so like, okay. what, 13 years after we moved there, 
I remember them building it and I was a teacher. Like they built onto it. It was a really tiny schoolhouse. And there were at most like twenty one students I think. And then they start then they built the other one because some of the students were like traveling four miles every morning to, just to get to school. It's ours in Bokia. And it was getting crowded enough to went to the where they were like they need to build a second one. So it's and they built the second one which emptied the first one out quite a bit. It was still really small. So they expanded it. Like they tore out they had just like two small back rooms in the back for okay. the like the clothes and the lunch boxes yep. and everything. So they tore the partitions out and built a small like closet onto the end of, or like entryway onto the end of it for that. So yeah. that was the experience with the school. With the church was a whole different thing. So they baptized the youth. You know, like when they get to a certain age. And we never knew like what they have like a service. So they start like getting ready to be baptized in the spring, like the beginning of June. So every Sunday they have like a I don't know what you call it, like a meeting with all the deacons and ministers and okay. at the church. And then in the fall, after eight Sundays of going, or after, like, they have two church services a month. So after four months in September, they have a, a service called the baptism service where they yep. get baptized. Yep. And I never, like, we never experienced that. We had no idea how it worked until I was, like, 10 or 11 the first of the youth got baptized there, and it was so new, so different. Like, we all learned something that day because none of us knew what it was like. <laughs> it's like, you know how they... I don't know. You've probably seen youth get baptized already at Amish youth. Yeah. How they, like, dump the water on the head and everything, and yeah. then give them the holy kiss, and we were so astounded by that. We were just <laughs> flabbergasted. <laughs> That was complete, like, it was, we were, we had secondhand embarrassment. <laughs> that was, like, completely new to us. And another thing is, the Amish wear all black to funerals. Mm -hmm. And, you know how I told you, we didn't have a funeral till I was, like, 10. Yeah. And when that funeral was, and we wanted to, like, go to the funeral, Mom was like, we have to wear all black. It was like... We have to wear all black? Like, yeah, it's a funeral. You have to wear all black. So that was when we learned you wear black for a funeral. Like, <laughs> we just, there's so yeah. much stuff like that we just didn't know. It's so, like, it was, yeah, it was really eye opening. <laughs> yeah, Some so, of the stuff that so, happened. So I just want to clarify, like, and uh, I think this is, especially amongst the Swartz and True Bromish, the way that we grew up is. The communication is not very good. I mean, in the Amish community, uh, you grew you grew up that way, yeah. and you just learn as you grow up. But they don't really talk about these yeah. things, and they don't really know how to communicate these things to even yeah. the outside world. Exactly. And so the outside world, uh, most of the time, is left with a lot of questions. Yeah, but so and, if, like, regarding their ordinum or their orders or rules and everything yeah a lot of the people in the outside world always ask like how do you remember it all we're like we don't remember it all we don't know anything else that's our life it's hard like they never tell us growing up Amish you're never told the rules you just you learn them <laughs> like yeah. you don't have a choice yeah. you lift them it's yeah. like they're not they're not rules. You don't question them. They're just life. Yeah. You let it be. And if you're not supposed to do it, you don't question it. You do. You just stay inside your line. <laughs> Which is, it's really, really hard to explain. And I feel like a lot of, like, even if I would ask my parents some of these questions, they wouldn't, they couldn't come up with the answers yeah. for them because they themselves don't know. And that's why it's so hard when someone asks to like try and come up with the right answer to explain it because you have to think like you grew up that way but it's still a challenge for yourself to answer those questions. 
<laughs> well, it's like, yeah, and if, even if you try to answer, it's... It just leads to more questions. It leads to more questions, and that's that's what we're hoping to do on yeah. this podcast, is to answer as many questions and get into as much of the details yeah. as possible so people can kind of understand wh- how the Amish live, how they think, because yeah. I think that's the, the most important part, because... If you understand how they think, then you can understand a little bit more of how they operate with the rules. Uh Because if you nail down on one specific rule, and you're like, why do they do that? (laughs) You'll never figure it out. You're never going to figure it out. (laughs) Yeah, I feel like that's something like uh, you guys could probably uh, ask questions about. We could probably answer them along with the further we get with this. With the podcast, Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, please leave comments and ask any question that you would like to have answered, and we'll answer it on the next podcast. Yeah. And um, we'll go through all the comments, we'll read them, and we'll answer uh, the the questions as the best way that we can. But yeah. But we'll also answer them on the next podcast. If you have anything that you would like for us to talk about, please leave that in the comments below, and we'll definitely bring that up in the next video or the, or sometime in the next several videos yeah. depending on how many questions come in it'll all but, come in <laughs> and we <promise. laughs> we are pretty new at this yeah. as you can tell but we're super excited for it because there are so many people that want to know uh, our stories and I've avoided uh, sharing my story for a long time because I just, that, and that's the other thing, when you leave the Amish, you kind of, you leave and you want to, uh, I feel like most, most Amish kids, they want to just get away. They want to get away from the community, they want to get away from the mm-hmm. lifestyle, but what actually ends up happening is most of them yeah. stay like close by the community, yeah. close by the, the family, and either. they really uh, end up just being Amish Wearing without English wearing English Amish clothes. clothes. Yes, exactly. Being <laughs> Amish with English clothes on. So That's... what made you move all the way from Iowa to Texas to get away from... I mean, you only left, I, like, what, two years ago? Two and a half. I left... So it'll be three years in April that I left. Three years? Okay. And when I left, I left very unexpectedly, so I kind of shocked myself. I didn't have any plans when I left. And my older brother, I'm the second oldest, my older brother also left. And he just kind of took charge and moved me to Minnesota where I was born. And I lived there for the past two and a half years. And I, this summer, I just wanted to get away. There's still a lot of Amish in that area. And I just wanted to leave it all behind and go. I wanted to do something different. So I moved to Texas, and okay. I haven't regretted it yet. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, I yeah, really well, love it here. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah I'm you. glad you're here too. Cause, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it made the move a little bit easier it to get did down made, here. Make it a lot easier. The fact that I have family here makes it a lot easier. Yeah, I think yeah. it's. I mean, I I think it's super interesting because your brother, uh, your brother left. What was it? Four years ago. Uh, three years. It'll ago. be four years in February. Four, four. Yeah, so I left a year year. after he did. Gotcha. Yeah. So I remember when he left because I got a phone call uh-huh. and he came to Texas. <laughs> he attempted to leave a year and a half and he didn't. A year and a half earlier and it didn't work, which is also a very interesting story. Last time me and him were discussing it and. <laughs> He'll have to share that on the podcast. He will definitely <laughs> have to. He has. He could tell a whole story about that. That would be really interesting. You'll, you'll have to get him to tell that story because I had a big part in foiling his plans. Okay, so so walk walk us through what it's like to leave the Amish, like to get out. Like it's, practically, what do you do? to get out of the Amish, like step by step. You go through, You go to very great lengths in my experience anyway so I just made the decision to leave like four weeks before I actually left and I was so you decided by yourself 
Yes. Not, not no one parents. else had anyone, anything to, no one had the slightest clue that I was leaving. Not okay. a soul. And I planned it in the back of my mind. I wasn't sure if it would work. I was scared it would fail, but I figured it's worth a try. Yes. And I, I'm a very p a meticulous person, so I packed everything up in my room. I had my own room. Everything that I didn't want or need, I packed it all up. I gave the leftovers to my siblings because they were always really happy to get my scraps. <laughs> <laughs> I gave it time. I cleaned my whole room up. I didn't let anyone into my room for like the last two weeks that I was home because I was afraid they'd see that it was like cleaned up and mm -hmm. they'd suspect something. And I packed up like some of my... Uh, handkerchiefs and like Amish have like these handkerchiefs with their letters and everything on it and mm -hmm. I had gotten like a bunch of those over the years that people had given to me and I saw it like I'd use them if I leave so I packed that up some of those I had like a blanket that was mine just different things little, mm -hmm. keep, little keepsakes that I wanted and mm -hmm. I packed it all into a suitcase and at 11 o'clock on a Monday night I left the house I sneaked out it took me all of 30 minutes to get out of my room, downstairs, and outside. I was wow. that slow. So I started at 10.30. I didn't dare do it any earlier because I was afraid my parents would. It was in April, so it was like right at the time where we were just starting to go to bed like a little later because of the daylight change. Oh, yes. And I was afraid if I went like at 10, they would still be awake enough to hear me, but I didn't want to wait until too late in the night because... Then there's solid, like, once you go to sleep, you have, like, this period of, like, really solid sleep at yeah. first. And yeah. I knew my mom and dad both did that. So I wanted to go while they were solidly sleeping so I wouldn't wake them up. And I sneaked my suitcase downstairs. So it had just snowed. It was, like, the middle of April. We had snow on the ground. And I wrapped my blanket around me and pinned it in the front here. And I had a scarf on, like, the Amish wear mm -hmm. scarves. And I took my suitcase and sneaked downstairs. I left my shoes downstairs in the outside entrance the, just before I went to bed. I put those on, and I walked four whole miles to get to my friend's house <laughs> in the middle oh. of the night. It took me like two hours to walk those four miles. It was a long four miles. And when I got there, the house was dark. It was locked. I didn't want to wake them up, so I crawled into their unlocked semi-sleeper, and that's where I slept the rest of the night. What? <laughs> and the next morning, I went in and I waited until they got, like, opened the door to go outside, and they found me there, and the rest What of the night. in the world? So, do you <laughs> need, so they had no idea you were coming? Nope, they did not have they a had. single clue. If I would have told them, they would have come pick me up at my parents' house, and that would have scared me, because I think, I'm pretty sure my parents would have woken up, and I did not want that. Wow. So, so they I, just... So they just like took you in? Yep. And it was as much a shock for them as it was for everybody else and they just took me in and I slept there for the next two nights. Yeah. And then my brother came, picked me up and took me to Minnesota. So. Oh wow. So yeah. your brother had already left, he came and picked you up yep. when he found out about it. <laughs> yeah, and when he he said when they called him, when my friends called him to tell him that I had left, he said he was at work with my uncle, and he said when my uncle saw the look on his face when he got the news, he asked if everything's okay. <laughs> a lot of people, like, he wouldn't believe it. That he made them send a picture of me because he didn't believe it that I had actually wow. left. Because I used to be a very down-to-earth Amish person. I was the most self-righteous Amish person I judged very harshly and I was yeah when my brother left I just thought it was the worst thing ever I did not forgive him I just thought he was like evil because we're taught if you leave the Amish you're evil and it was yeah it was really shocking to me and everybody else <laughs> to my yeah. parents especially so yeah, I can't imagine. You're, I mean, yeah. I can't imagine going through that as a parent, honestly. Because, yeah, I couldn't I either. Mean, my parents went through it. Your parents are going through it. That was but, one of the 
most like when I made the decision to leave, that was the only thing that almost stopped me was because my brother had left and I knew what went down. I knew how hard it was on him. And I almost didn't have the heart to do it because I knew it would like break their hearts. But I also knew I had to look out for myself for once and yep. they would like life would go on, they would get over it. Yeah. So I did it and I know it's hard. It's so hard on them but I think they've accepted it. Yeah. <laughs> And I want to just clarify for those people that are watching that are probably thinking, well, why didn't you just talk to your parents about it? That would not be important. I want to say, I mean, and you can share your experience as well, but I just want to say that, like, for a person that didn't grow up that way, it's really hard for you to understand what we would go through as, as a child because we're we're raised in that environment to not break out it's almost like Mm -hmm. you're put in a prison by the way that you're by the way that you're taught your mind is put in a prison yes and so the only way that it feels like there's a possibility that you could break free from that is if nobody knows you're doing it Mm -hmm. including your parents and so that's why the kids don't talk to their parents because if they would i think in my instance, my parents would have literally locked me up, forcefully kept me there. I think, I don't know to what lengths they would have gone, but I wasn't, I wasn't strong enough. Like, I didn't have enough self will that I could have battled against them if I would have told them or said anything to them. I would never have ever broken free because they would have convinced me not to, like. I knew when I made the decision to leave, I knew that no one could find out because if they would have found out, I would have lost all nerve and I wouldn't have done it. I yeah. would have been way too scared. Yeah. I was scared the way it was and no one knew. <laughs> so, yeah. 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 yeah, it's just, you just don't tell anyone. It's just the way, it's really different. You just It's just not something you... The Amish talk about is leaving. Even after you leave, I feel like they kind of try to like keep it as low as possible. Like they try to ignore the fact as much as they can. Yeah. Anyways, when my brother left, they did. Like for he had left for fourteen months before I left, and it was a very long time. I'd say it was at least a year before we actually spoke about him. Wow. So we... Wow. It was a That's whispered crazy. conversation if we talked about him. Last night, he was asking me how it is, like how it was after he left. And I was like, it was almost as if he had died in some kind of tragic way that is like... It was almost as if he had committed suicide. Hmm. It's like treated the same way it is when someone commits suicide. Yeah. Anyways, that's what it was treated like in my community. And it's it varies it varies from like one household to another, I know, but it's something that is really whispered about and not talked about in the open, like you just don't discuss it. Which is what they do with a lot of our stuff. I feel like if they don't think it's right, it's just they don't talk about it in the open. Yeah. It's just they think yep. if they're quiet, it'll go away. Yeah. She <laughs> yep. doesn't really. <laughs> yeah, and I, th- I think that's the, that's the interesting part about... And for the Swartz and Trooper Amish, that's the most conservative way you can grow up. Mm-hmm. And that's, yeah. that's where all, a lot of these experiences come from. Because if you go to like, like a, an old order Amish, which are more... Uh, relaxed in their rules and yeah. they have more modern conveniences a lot of those kids they don't have the same story they leave and their parents actually support them after yeah. they leave for us it was just completely was like different because off, yeah like, you're you're cut off from yeah. your family don't come home or maybe come home once or twice a year and uh, it depends on who your parents are too yeah <laughs> it really depends on that so my dad is a deacon in Amish church, and yeah. I always feel like that makes a huge difference 
in how we get treated. It's because he has the whole church watching him. Yeah. Like he's going to get judged if he makes the wrong move. So, yeah, he doesn't have to sing for himself. He has to sing for the church. <laughs> Yeah. And that and that's honestly the way a lot of them operate and uh -huh. operate it's, their lives is they don't th they don't they really live off of the fear of the church instead of yeah well the fear of man really yeah the fear of you know, their neighbor the fear of the church as a whole yeah and uh, they don't really live their own lives exactly. for themselves yeah. and some of them do in secret oh but... yeah a lot of them do in secret I feel like. Way more than we probably realize because yeah. they're doing it in secret. Yeah. So I know in uh, my community, everything was really out in the open because it was such a small community. Like everyone mm. knew everyone else's birthday and it was really public. It was everything. Everything you did was like you had to watch yourself because you were going to get the evil eye if you didn't. Do the right thing, which made it really like you got a lot of pressure if you have to like live your life every day in fear that someone's gonna judge you for it. So they have their three meals a day, and I distinctly remember like you're expected in a respectful Amish household, you're expected to have your table cleared and the dishes all done within like an hour after the meal. Mm. And I so distinctly remember when I was like 11, we had. Uh, lunch like usual one day and mom went to take a nap and we were supposed to do the dishes and we were young we didn't do our job <laughs> and at three o'clock we still hadn't cleared the table like there was the stuff was still all on the table and someone showed up like one of the neighbors ladies showed up and mm. that was the most horrible day <laughs> I think that's why I still remember it was really traumatic because that's like that's so that story is told among the whole community. Like, everyone knows our table wasn't cleared at 3 o'clock. That was, like, horrible. Like, oh, wow. So, like, just things like that. Like, you had to stay on top of everything or you would get caught. Like, mm. you never knew when someone was going to pop in and you didn't have your dishes done. <laughs> yeah, it was... And you always... Sundays is visiting day and you never know when someone's going to show up and you want your house to be clean when they do because you don't want anyone to judge you on how your house looks. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. a lot of small things like that that <clears throat> just normal life, you just don't worry about it. Like, it's your business, it's your life. No one else is going to judge you for it. Yeah. But, yeah, they do. <laughs> that makes it super challenging to transition from the Amish to the outside mm -hmm. world because you... One you thing, have to learn. <clears throat> you have that, to learn not to judge everyone. Well, and you have to learn that people are not always reacting yes, in the same exactly. way that yeah. the people within the community do. I feel like that's something that's really hard is getting used to the fact that the public doesn't. The public is not going to judge you based on how your yard looks or how your house looks the way the Amish judge themselves. Yeah. They, their values are so much based on how clean their house is, how clean their yard is, how nice everything looks. Like, they very much look at the outside to judge people, and yeah. it's really pressuring something. <laughs> <laughs> and, that's, yeah. and that's why, I mean, the clothes are all specific. Their specific mm -hmm. clothes, and we'll yeah. address that in another podcast. But why Amish wear a certain kind of clothes? Yeah. And uh, so, please su subscribe to the channel. Yeah. And we're gonna wrap it up here. We thank you for watching, and this is Levina's story. If there's anything in this story that resonates with you, uh, that you have questions on, please um, comment below, and we'd love to hear from you. And we'll do our best to answer those questions. And I just want to say on the podcast, we're going to, we're going to interview people that have unique experiences. And I want to hear their story. And so hopefully that story will inspire you or help you in some kind of way. And that's what this podcast is going to be about. So I hope you guys enjoy today's interview. Uh, please comment and let us know what we can do better 
and uh, what questions you have and what questions we can answer in the next podcast. Thank you all for watching.